Hi, good morning everyone. My name is Gloria Tie. I'm one of the Form 3 English teacher. Uh, you can call me Chegu Gloria or Teacher Gloria, okay? It's up to you. Alright, so before we start our today lesson, let's just recall what we have learned in previous lesson, okay? Previous lesson, you already learned uh, about your family ties, right? Which is your ancestor, your family members, okay? You learn um, some grammar, which is present simple and present continuous. Besides that, you also learn few adjectives, yes? Okay, for you to describe people. Can you recall some of it? Okay, few of it? Yes, okay. If you can use the word pretty, beautiful, handsome, chubby, teen. Okay, that is the few adjectives for you to describe people. That's correct. Okay, let's come back to our business today. Alright, so our business today, we're going to learn the new chapter, which is chapter 2. The title is Food. Alright, so I know that everyone loves food. Okay, besides that, that also a basic one of the basic necessities um, that you need to keep on living in this world, right? Okay, so our main skill for today, we have three main skills, which is reading, listening, and grammar focus is past simple and past continuous. For all the main skill, our learning standards for today, which is what I need you to learn today, okay? Is first one for the reading, you're going to read the non-fiction print text of interest. Besides that, you also, when you do the reading, you have to understand, okay? You read and understand the information. And for our listening part, you try to listen to the audio that I will give later, okay? When you listen to the audio, please write any words or any information that you cannot understand so that it will help you and then you can ask your teacher later. For writing part, uh, I need you to spell the words correctly, okay? So these words, especially words that regarding food, it will help you when you do your writing part later. And the last one, our grammar. So our grammar today is the past simple and past continuous. Okay, so you have to understand how to use and how to apply it. Uh, because you're going to apply it in the related sentences given later. Can you see the picture there? Okay, so... What is the picture mainly about? Yeah, it's a burger, okay? Very big burger. So, uh, what do you think burger made of? Okay, um, tomatoes, yes, correct, tomato. You can have cheese, you have a patty, it's either chicken, beef patty, okay? Um, onion, yeah, of course, burger should have onion. Okay. So, this burger is one of the world record burger, okay, world record burger that have been recorded um, with 519 pound weight, okay. It take place in Toronto, Canada. Alright, so, the sales of this burger uh, will be contribute to Camp Buko, which is a children charity center. It's time for your task one. So what you need to do in this task, you need to spell out 10 favorite foods. Okay, your favorite foods. Okay, you need to spell it. You pause a while this video. Okay, and then you write in your exercise book. Please correctly state that task one. All right. So write on top task one and then write the, title, uh, the, the instruction, which is list down your top 10 favorite foods and then one until 10. This is our reading title today, and oil for life. So what oil we mentioned here, which is olive oil, okay? We're going to talk about olive oil today. That is your reading. So basically, olive oil been used very widely in our daily life, actually. We use it in our cooking, uh, pastry, cake, okay? Even our cleansing bar, uh, shower, uh, our shower gel, sorry, our shower gel, shampoo, and oil for baby olive oil or our hair oil so this is our reading today uh, sorry it's not been clearly typed here so it's stated as maria right so maria alcala of madrid 
speaks for many Mediterranean people when she says that a meal without olive oil is boring. Blank number one knows when the Mediterranean fell, fell in love with olives because it was before people wrote and kept record. However, there is some evidence that people began growing olive trees around the Mediterranean Sea approximately 6,000 years ago. The Mediterranean countries still blank number two, 99% of the world olive oil with Spain being the world's biggest producer. From ancient times, blank number three, today, the basic process of producing the oil is the same. First, farmer crush the olives. Then, they take the liquid and separate the oil from the water. Many olive growers keep their ancient traditions and still harvest the olives, blank number four, hands. We harvest in the traditional way, says Don Celso, an olive farmer from Tuscany, Italy. It is less expensive to do it with machines, but it is more a social thing. 20 people come to help with the harvest and we pay them in oil. Ancient civilization used olive oil, blank number five, money and medicines. They even used it during war. They heat it up and drop it down on the enemy. Blank number six, days. It is still used in religious ceremony as it was in ancient times. It is also great for making fish and cheese stay fresh. There are one important study shows that Mediterranean people have the heart. Blank number seven, in the Western world, this is partly to do with frequently using olive oil. Other studies have shown that using olive oil can help to protect people from some types of diseases. The world is beginning to understand the advantages of using olive oil and it isn't an unusual thing to see on dinner table outside the Mediterranean region anymore. The olive oil producing countries now sell large blank number eight of olive oil to countries in Europe, Asia, Africa, and North and South America. Olive oil improves the life of people everywhere when it is, it is part of a well-balanced blank number nine. Ancient people knew about it benefits and modern science has confirmed them. Luckily, the Mediterranean people are happy to blank number 10, their secret with the world. All right, did you understand the text? So basically in the text, there's a lot of blank, which is 10 blank. So this blank, you have to copy the text and then fill in the blank by refer to task number two. All right, so the answer already given to you, it's either A, B, C, or D. Each one of the blank. Okay, so what you need to do is you copy the text and then you try to understand and then circle the answer. Is it okay for you? You may refer back to my previous video so that it will help you to copy the text and then allow you to choose and read again. For your task tree, you have to do mix and match. This is the words they're given. You have to find the definition or meaning of this word. And then you have to write down the alphabet A, B, C, D, or E of each definition match with the words given. So all this word, you can find it's underlined in the text given, okay? Like this, diseases, okay? Here, yeah, civilization, all right? And next is evidence and process. So all this word, you have to write it in your exercise book, okay? Copy, like I said before. You copy down task three and then the instruction. Find the words one until five in the text and match them to their definition A until E. All right. So I need you to do exactly the same. So 
copy the exercise and then write the answer here okay inside here a b c d or e is it clear okay let's proceed to task number four so your task four you have to fill in the words within uh, the correct words in the sentence given okay butter and olive oil are both fats but olive oil is a lunch good unhealthy or all fat and is better eat on from for you because it makes likes protects healthy so choose either one answer all right so exactly the same right in your exercise book okay just now we talk about um, olive oil but did you know that Sarawak will also have olive, but it's less popular than uh, olive oil that found in the global wide. So in Sarawak, we have Sarawak wild olive, which is we call in local name by Buah Dabai. Did you ever heard of it? Okay, it's known as Buah Dabai. Okay, the average price is about 25 to 45 per kg. And it's only available in Sarawak. This wild olive is very special. It's only available in Sarawak, especially part of Cebu and Kapit. So, this Buadabai will also process it. But like I told you before, it's not globalized window. Okay, we process it into drink mayonnaise food paste crackers dried dabai and salty pickled dabai um, and also sauce there is a dabai sauce um, you can try it sometimes find find the more information about it okay just in case people ask you uh, did you ever heard about uh, olive sarawak olive so sure you ever heard about it and also even mm, i'm sure that is one of your favorite food right now let's move to second part, which is listening. Before we start our listening, um, I'm going to share with you three tips. The first tips before you listen, read the question carefully and check you understand the topic. Second tips, underline the important words, number or dates in the main question and A until C options. The third tips, be careful with numbers and dates. Sometimes they are very they sounds very similar. When you listen the second time, check your answer carefully. So, um, in general, or as a conclusion, what you need to do is before you start your audio, make sure you copy the question. That is the first one. Copy and then read. Second one, um, be careful with the uh, with the certain main idea or certain main words in the sentence in the question okay so you have to underline if you cannot understand or you want to take note of that please underline it and the third point is um, you must listen carefully to the words that been mentioned in the audio especially the date and the numbers all right so when you listen at the second time check your answer this is your listening task the first task okay so um, copy the question. You may pause my video, okay, to copy the question. Now let's move to the audio. I hope it's clear enough. Listening, Unit 2, page 22A. 1. My younger brother was born in 2011. 2. Those jeans are really cheap. They only cost £35. 3. There were 950 people at their wedding party. 4. Is the 26th of December a national holiday in the UK? 5. The hotel rooms are very expensive. They're $260 per night. Okay, catch up. All right, now circle your answer. I will play again this video. Uh, sorry, this audio. So you listen again, okay, and check your answer. Listening, Unit 2, page 22A. 1. 
My younger brother was born in 2011. 2. Those jeans are really cheap. They only cost £35. 3. There were 950 people at their wedding party. 4. Is the 26th of December a national holiday in the UK? 5. The hotel rooms are very expensive. They're $260 per night. Okay, that's it for your listening part one. Now we move to our task number six, which is listening part two. You will hear a radio interview about a restaurant festival. This audio is quite long, okay? So be patient. So as I told you before, copy the question first, and then only then you listen to the audio, right? Listening, unit two, page 22D. You will hear a radio interview about a restaurant festival. For each question, circle the correct option A, B or C. Good evening and welcome to the food programme. With me in the studio tonight is Faye Wallace, who has her own food and restaurant blog. Tonight we're talking about the London Restaurant Festival, which is a two week long event and celebrates eating out. So, Faye, tell us a bit about the festival. Hello, John. Well, the London Restaurant Festival is about helping people to learn about and to try some of the fantastic restaurants in our city. The festival started in 2009 when over 450 restaurants took part. This year, the organisers are hoping that there will be approximately 800 restaurants. Wow, that's a lot of restaurants. So what do they have to do? Well, all the restaurants will prepare special starters, mains and desserts to demonstrate their chef skills and favourite dishes. There will be four different prices for menu, starting at under £10 per person, up to over £25 per person. This means a great variety of restaurants can take part, from the traditional to the trendy, and everyone can enjoy the festival. That sounds good. And I heard that one of the nice things about the festival is that as well as promoting restaurants and offering tasty meals, it also raises money for charity. That's right. For every restaurant that participates in the festival, the organisers will donate £5 to Street Smart, an organisation which helps people living on the streets. And what else will happen during the festival? Well, an interesting part of it is the Gourmet Odyssey. The idea is that you eat each course of a three-course lunch in a different restaurant. Traditional London buses will transport people between the three restaurants and in each restaurant you get to meet the chefs. There are four different routes to choose from and this event costs £135 per person. If you prefer to walk and not take the bus, there's also a walking version of the Odyssey, which follows the same programme, but you only pay £95. So you can eat and stay fit at the same time? Maybe, John. Perhaps the most exciting part of the festival is dinner on the London Eye. Each night, one of the London Eye capsules will become a unique dining room. As you dine, the wheel goes round very slowly and you get an amazing view of London. Each night, a different famous chef will cook a delicious meal, and on one night only, the chef will be the famous Gordon Ramsay. All the money made at this event will go to the Street Smart charity. Well, Faye, I hope I'll have time to go, and if not, I'll read all about it on your blog. That's all we have time for tonight, but now... Okay, that's it for your first audio, as your second audio. So now let's proceed again uh, to the second time recording, okay? Listening, Unit 2, page 22D. You will hear a radio interview about a restaurant festival. For each question, circle the correct option A, B or C. Good evening and welcome to the food programme. With me in the studio tonight is Faye Wallace, who has her own food and restaurant blog. Tonight we're talking about the London Restaurant Festival, which is a two-week-long event and celebrates eating out. So, Faye, 
tell us a bit about the festival. Hello, John. Well, the London Restaurant Festival is about helping people to learn about and to try some of the fantastic restaurants in our city. The festival started in 2009 when over 450 restaurants took part. This year, the organisers are hoping that there will be approximately 800 restaurants. Wow, that's a lot of restaurants. So what do they have to do? Well, all the restaurants will prepare special starters, mains and desserts to demonstrate their chef's skills and favourite dishes. There will be four different prices for menu, starting at under £10 per person, up to over £25 per person. This means a great variety of restaurants can take part, from the traditional to the trendy, and everyone can enjoy the festival. That sounds good. And I heard that one of the nice things about the festival is that as well as promoting restaurants and offering tasty meals, it also raises money for charity. That's right. For every restaurant that participates in the festival, the organisers will donate £5 to Street Smart, an organisation which helps people living on the streets. And what else will happen during the festival? Well, an interesting part of it is the Gourmet Odyssey. The idea is that you eat each course of a three-course lunch in a different restaurant. Traditional London buses will transport people between the three restaurants and in each restaurant you get to meet the chefs. There are four different routes to choose from and this event costs £135 per person. If you prefer to walk and not take the bus, there's also a walking version of the Odyssey which follows the same programme but you only pay £95. So you can eat and stay fit at the same time? Maybe, John. Perhaps the most exciting part of the festival is dinner on the London Eye. Each night, one of the London Eye capsules will become a unique dining room. As you dine, the wheel goes round very slowly and you get an amazing view of London. Each night, a different famous chef will cook a delicious meal and on one night only, the chef will be the famous Gordon Ramsay. All the money made at this event will go to the Street Smart charity. Well, Faye, I hope I'll have time to go. And if not, I'll read all about it on your blog. That's all we have time for tonight. But now... Today we're going to learn past simple tenses. Okay, past simple tense. Um, past simple tense for verb to be, there is a three condition. Positive sentence, negative sentence and question sentence. Okay. So, for positive sentence, subject, this is S. S is referred to subject, okay? Subject. I, he, she, it, we, you, they, okay? That is a subject. So, we identify it as S subject, okay? So, was or were. When to use it? Bila nak guna, okay? When to use was or were. So, was or were, we'll be using it when it's come to plural and singular subject. Do you still remember that? Okay, I hope that you remember. Okay, singular maksudnya satu. Plural meaning that more than one, lebih daripada satu. So, we, you, they. That is a plural. He, she, it, I. That is singular. So, semua singular we use was. Semua plural we use were. Okay. If it verb to have. Have is present tense. So, dia punya past tense will be had. Verb to do. Do is present tense. So, the past tense is did. So, if you see the word do, change it to did. If you see the word have, change it to had. Okay, that is the pre uh, past tenses. Okay, past tenses. Alright, so come back to this part. So, for positive sentence, we will write it, they were friends. Okay, they were friends. Kenapa guna were? Sebab this is plural subject. Okay, I was a friend. Saya berasa takut. So, I will using was. I was a friend. Okay, so negative sentence. Subject plus was not or were not. 
Okay, or wasn't ataupun weren't. Okay, weren't. So, they weren't friends. Mereka bukan kawan. Boleh? Okay, I hope it's working. Right? Next, question sentence. Was, were plus subject. Was or were plus subject. Okay, were they friends? Adakah mereka kawan? Right, were they friends? So, that is how you use it for the past simple tense. And for verb of it, you have to change it with ed. Subject plus verb. It, that is when the sentence is subject and then verb. Okay, subject and verb. So, subject plus verb. Ini subject, ini verb. So, the verb have to put ed. Right? She plus denote. Plus verb. She didn't. Didn't sama dengan did not. Okay. She didn't work yesterday. She didn't work yesterday. So work here when it, when you using didn't is come back to the best form. Tidak ada ed dekat belakang sebab depan dia ada didn't. Okay. Did she plus verb in best form. Did she work yesterday. Did she work yesterday? When the subject plus verb is come back to the verb uh, best form, okay? Guna kata dasar dia. Ini kata dasar maksudnya best form. Did she work yesterday? So, when you ask something with did, did she sleep last night? Okay? Kamu tidak tanya, did she sleeping last night? No. Okay? Did she sleep last night? Okay, she didn't work yesterday. So, come back to best word again. Kata dasar dia. Unless it is subject plus verb. Kalau subject plus verb, uh, the verb you have to change to past tense. Kamu nak bagi tahu benda itu sudah berlaku. Okay, that is a past tense. Alright. So, past tense. When do you use past tense? Why we use past tense? First one, to express complete action in the past. Sebab kamu nak bagi tahu sesuatu itu terjadi. The things is happen. Mula pada masa dulu, lepas tu berakhir pada masa dulu. Is happen at the past and then end at the past too. Okay, itu maksud dia. Complete action in the past. I saw a ghost last Friday. Meaning that she saw the ghost last Friday. Only that Friday she saw the ghost. Okay, maksudnya start and end. At that Friday, okay? Maksudnya dia tengok pada hari itu. Dia tengok, lepas tu dia mula dan berakhir pada hari Jumaat itu. Itu maksud dia, okay? To describe a series of complete action in the past. Series of complete action. Maksudnya, satu rangkaian kerja. There is a work and work and work there, okay? Contoh, I finish work, walk to the beach and found a nice place to swim. So, there are some many things, series of action, many action inside one time. But the things happen at the past. To express habit in the past, habit can be said as action, okay? Uh, your nature, to maksud habit, okay? The nature, right? Um, your daily routine, itu maksud habit. Maksudnya... Tabiat harian kamu. Uh, so, the sentence, When I was young, I watch a lot of television every day after school. When I was young, I watch a lot of television every day after school. Maksudnya, sesuatu tabiat kamu. Sesuatu rutin harian kamu. Right? So, remember that we use past tense to talk about complete action in the past. Second, a series of action, which is the meaning of uh, action that happen after one another in the past. Okay, maksudnya lepas satu satu in one time. And then the third you use to express your habit, your routine, your nature. Okay, in the past. So semua itu mesti berlaku pada masa dahulu in past. Okay, for stative verb have, kamu kena tukar dengan had lah. Okay. Be, think, no, dislike, need, or, and wishes. Ini tidak ada kata, tidak ada ed dekat belakang dia. 
Okay, the, all this dative verb, there is no ed behind. You have to change the word. Okay, so now, now let's move to task number seven. So, task number seven, you have to read the sentences below. Which sentence has a regular verb in the past simple? Okay, regular verb. And then you have to match each sentence in A with one use of the past simple below. So, you have to put here one, two, or three in each boxes. Okay? In each box, you have to put one or the two, the sentence number three. The sentence is here. You have to match it. For example, past routine and habit. So, which one is the routine and habit? Natalie went to the shop, bought a pizza and took it home. Or, I cooked fish last week. Or, James had croissant for breakfast every day when he was in France. So, which one? Past routine and habit. Maksudnya, tabiat harian kamu yang dulu. One, two or three. Yes, we talk about number three. Okay, so you put. You put three here. Alright? So this is simple, right? Okay, now let's move to the past continuous tenses. Okay, continuous tenses, meaning that verb must plus with ing. Okay? But the, the other things is the same. Okay, positive sentence, negative sentence, question sentence. Only the difference from past, past simple is the verb, if here is plus ed, for continuous, you have to put ing. Okay? So, subject plus was or were. She was cooking all morning. She was sleeping. They, was, uh, they were eating. She plus was or were plus not. This is for negative sentence. So, she was not sleeping. They were not sleeping. They were not eating. Okay? For the question sentence, was or were must be in front, right here, plus subject, plus verb, ing. Was she sleeping? Were they eating? Or you were outing? Okay, so something like that. Don't forget your question mark here. So when to use the past continuous? Okay, past continuous you use to interrupt action in the past. Meaning that... Um, uh, interrupted action in the past, meaning that um, you are doing something and then something happened in the meantime. They were waiting for the train when I spoke to them. Okay, they were waiting for the train when I spoke to them. Meaning that when they were we then when they were wait waiting for the train, you are talking to them. So that is an uh, interrupting. Okay, and then past habit, past habit. Uh, meaning that um, something that you already do and then you keep doing. My mom was always complaining about my room when she got there. So every time she go to your room, she will complain about uh, about the, your room. Okay. Parallel action. I was studying while my brother was watching. So um, in the series of time, there's a lot of things happen. Okay. Specific time as an interaction. Last night at 6 p.m., I was eating dinner. So, specific time. And then at that specific time, you are doing something. So, we call that as a interaction. Is it clear for you? Now, let's move to this part. Task number 8. Read the sentences below. How do we form the past continuous? So, here past continuous was watching, was cooking. So, you have to match with the action, okay? With the action. A, an action that was in progress at a specific time in the past. So, number one, number two, number three, or number four. Action that was in progress at a specific time in the past. Meaning that ongoing, on the, that is an ongoing process, but the, there are interruption at the time, okay? Uh, number one, Jennifer was watching TV while her mom was cooking dinner. One is a parallel. There are two things happen at one time. Number two, I, it was raining. The rain was blowing and we were shaking from the cold. 
for this one is uh, it was raining the wind was blowing and we were shaking from the cold so this one want to talk about the I want, I want to talk about the things that happened during that time. Number three, I was making coffee at 7 o'clock this morning. I was uh, I was making coffee at 7 o'clock at this morning. This one to talk about specific time. What did you do during that specific time? Okay, which is our A. An action that was progressed at a specific time in the past. So you're talking about the time okay that was chopping carrot when the phone rang so this one is um, action that interrupted by the other action okay while your dad is chopping the uh, the carrot then the phone rang meaning that the other things uh there is there are other things interrupt when doing the other things okay so one two three four you have to label it out here okay uh, and then copy the question. Make sure you copy the question in your exercise book. All right. Task number nine. Complete the text with the past simple. So you only change the present tense here. Present in the bracket. Okay. The present verb here. You change to the past simple. Okay. You change the verb to the past tense. Is it clear? Like, most people love pizza and it's been around for a very long time. So, number one, you know the question mark. Okay, so this is a question type sentence. So, past simple question type sentence. You know. Okay, look at it. You, you know. So how we make it written back to your idea? Your notes, past simple question. Okay, question, verb, you know, so you have to use the word did, okay, did, did subject is you, verb is no in best form, pada kata dasar, maksudnya the no, you no need to change, okay, so here you will put it, did you know that something similar to pizza was prepared in ancient Greece. The ancient Greeks cover present tense. Past tense apa? Yes, correct. Covered. C O V E R E D. So you have to put E D. Covered. Spell it in number two here. The bread with oil, herbs, and cheese. The Romans later developed. It's a present tense. What is the past tense for develop? What is the past tense? Yes, correct. Tambah ED juga. So, develop. D-E-V-E-L-O-P-E-D. -E -E so, I need you to do the rest. So, make sure you copy task number 9 in your exercise book. Let's move to our last task, task number 10. Okay. Complete the sentences with the correct form of past simple or the past continuous of the verb in bracket. Okay. So, you have to look at back at your rules, the rules here. And the rules of past simple here, okay? Understand the question so that it help you, okay? It will help you later to determine either this sentence, each sentence is past simple or past continuous. So, number one, we, some ice cream, after we, after, meaning that already happened or continuous? Sedang berlaku ke ataupun sudah berlaku? Okay, so it's already happened after selepas. So we it change to yes correct at a t e at a t e some ice cream after we finish selesai put e d f i n i s h finish okay. Uh, we choose another question which is number four. The children, pizza, when I, into their bedroom. When I, meaning that that is ongoing happen. Sedang berlaku semasa saya. So, it is ongoing happen. The children were, 
were ordering. Okay, the children were ordering. W E R E were ordering. O R D R D E R I N G were ordering pizza when I walk into their bedroom. Past ten. Okay, past simple walk. When I walk into their bedroom. Right, very good. Now let's look at number six. Karen. Lunch while Peter the table. Two action happen. Yes, is it continuous or past simple? It is continuous. Very good. Ia sedang berlaku sebab it didn't tell when it happened, right? So Karen, kalau dia ongoing, so verb must put ing. So Karen. Yes, is it was or were? Yes, correct. Was Karen was making lunch while Peter was setting the table. Okay, good. So this is all the exercise. You have ten tasks to complete in uh, about two days time. Okay, you have Saturday, Sunday. Um, please make sure you hand in all your tasks to your respective teacher. Uh, that's the end of our lesson. So stay safe everyone. If you have any question, you may ask your respective English teacher, right? Thank you.